I had to actually type in the conference number. Didn't work as smoothly as some conferences do. All right, we can get started. Um, I don't know if everybody knows who um, Belinda Chester is. She's the um, master, she runs the master, Gar you run the master gardener program, right? Over at yes. Rutgers Cooperative yes. Extension. And she's going to talk to us tonight about the uh, spotted red lantern fly, which is in, kind of invading our area right now. Um, I was shocked when I learned that um, they like to eat um, grapevines. And I was really worried about our area because we have several vineyards in the vicinity. So I was like, oh, we got to do something on this. So um, Belinda, why don't you get started? All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Is she going to screen share? Yes. I can't tolerate that, so I have to leave. Sorry, bye-bye. Well, why can't you tolerate that? <laughs> All right, go. Okay. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Again, I'm Belinda Chester, and I am the Master Gardener Program Coordinator for Atlantic County at Rutgers Cooperative Extension. And um, I'm just going to go through a couple of quick things, and um, and then we'll get started. So first of all, um, for those who don't know what uh, Cooperative Extension is, we're a part of the New Jersey Agriculture Experiment Station. Um, and Extension's mission is to bring research-based information to the public um, through informal education, like uh, publications or the lecture like we're doing today. Um, and it includes uh, 4-H. Um, marine, commercial fisheries and aquaculture, agriculture and horticulture, um, the Rutgers Master Gardener Program, uh, natural resources and water management, family and community health sciences, um, nutrition education, and um, a little plug for my program, the Master Gardener Helpline. Um, you can reach us. Um, you can actually reach us anytime between 8 and 4.30 at 609-625-0056. Um, but we do have volunteers there from 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays right now. Um, and they're available to, um, to research your questions and um, they actually actually they answer the calls directly. Um, so a lot of times I'll be out doing talks like this and I won't be in the office. So they're there to answer those questions and um, get homeowners their answers as fast as possible. You can also um, contact us through our website at Rutgers at Atlantic.org, um, or you can email us at AtlanticCountyMG at NJAES.Ruckers.edu. Um, and one other place you can find us is on Facebook at Rutgers Master Gardeners of Atlantic County. And we try to put uh, gardening tips and things that we're doing up there um, pretty often um, and things that we get from Extension Master Gardener. Um, and I have to put this up at everything to remind everyone that Rutgers uh, New Jersey Agriculture Experiment Station um, and Cooperative Extension are education programs that are offered to all without regard to race, religion, color, national origin, ancestry, age, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, disability, atypical hereditary cellular or blood trait, marital status, civil union status, domestic partnership status, military service, veterans, and any other category that is protected by law, Rutgers Cooperative Extension encourages individuals with disabilities to participate in its programs and activities. And if you ever need special accommodations or you have questions about physical access or require alternate means for program information, um, please contact me at the number I just gave you, the 609-625-0056. Um, that's your local extension office in Atlanta County. Um, or you can contact the state extension director's office if you have concerns that are related to discrimination. And that number is right here. Um, and I'm gonna ask one favor of you and um, you do not have to fill this form out, but um, we do ask at our programs that people, um, you know, if, if you're willing to fill out an equal opportunity uh, demographics questions. And what that does is gives, give us information on, um, you know, where, who's coming to our programming, our program. So um, it ensures that extension program is reaching a diverse audience. Um, we really appreciate your assistance in this and it, it helps us with future planning and making sure that everyone um, 
has access to our programming. So the link that you see there is an anonymous link. And at the end, I'll put that down in the chat box. Um, or you can use the, um, the QR code there. You can take a picture of that and that'll take you directly to the survey. It's all anonymous. Um, I have no idea who fills it out. It just tells me how many people came tonight and um, the approximate um, demographics of the group. All right, so let's get started. Um, what is a spotted lanternfly? So often I hear people, um, you know, through calls or out in the community, I read it on uh, social media that uh, people think that the spotted lanternfly is a moth, but it's actually um, the Asian plant hopper known as the spotted lanternfly. So it's not a moth at all, as much as it looks like one. Um, but in the United States, the spotted lan lanternfly is an invasive species that can be very devastating to some of our New Jersey crops and hardwood trees. Um, it was accidentally introduced into Pennsylvania back in September of 2014. Uh, it was confirmed in 2014. Um, and at first it was only found in Berks County. However, it spread throughout Pennsylvania now um, into neighboring, state, neighboring states that include New Jersey. It's gone north, it's gone east, it's gone south. Um, so it's just slowly spreading into different areas. Um, so I want to talk briefly about the life cycle of the spotted lantern fly. And they say um, there are actually four instars of nymphs. Um, you're not going to be seeing these around right, right now, but we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But it's important to know what these look like, especially once we get into the spring. Um, so there are four nymphal uh, instars. The first three instars are black with white spots, and that's the picture that you see up at the top there. Um, in all of these instars, they are fast jumpers. Um, remember, they're leaf hoppers. So they're going to, they're strong jumpers, they're very quick, and they're going to do anything they can to avoid uh, capture or predators. Um, and in the first through third instars, we usually start to see them around May. Um, and that's going to, you know, depend a little bit on weather, but um, usually in May, and then we'll see those through July. Um, in the fourth instar, they're approximately a half an inch in size. They're bright red. They're covered in black stripes and white spots. And you may have started seeing those um, as early as July. Um, but we really started seeing them in this area uh, pretty thick in August and then um, into the beginning of September. Again, they're strong jumpers and they're going to do everything they can to avoid danger. Um, now, this is where we are right now. So right now we're at the adult stage and this is a very important state. All of the stages are important and we can get rid of them at every stage. However, right now we're in the adult stage and it's extra important that we kill as many of them as we can. Um, so you're going to see them in a couple of different ways. Um, you'll see them grouped into, uh, you know, huddled into groups on trees. Um, you're going to see that they'll re they really attract to any surface, but um, you're going to see them flying um, where you're going to see the full, um, the full fly there. Um, and you're also more likely to see them in this, see them looking like this bottom picture and that top left picture. Um, they're going to be crawling around. Again, they're still um, very fast jumpers, so um, they can be difficult to catch, but um, they, they are a little easier to catch at this stage. So um, in the, you know, the, the four wing is gray uh, when they're not, when their wings, wings are not uh, spread out um, with black spots of varying sizes and the wingtips have black spots uh, outlined in gray. And uh, again, they probably, you can see them as early as July. We really started to see them here in September and we'll probably see them through December. Their hind wings have um, contrasting patches of red and black with a white band. Um, and then the legs are black. The abdomen is actually yellow with black bands on it. So um, unfortunately, I don't have a picture here of that, but I, um, but I would be happy to look one up for you. Um, adult spotted lantern fly with the wings open are actually a really beautiful insect. It's a shame they're so invasive because um, they're very pretty, but um, very devastating. So um, while they can fly, they typically opt not to fly. They're gonna glide from spot to spot. So say you were on your, uh, your patio and you're sitting in the chair and one lands on you or lands on a chair, um, you're unlikely to just see them flying around you um, like you would see mosquitoes or something like that. You're more like to, likely to see them walking along a surface and then sort of gliding to the next surface. 
um, or gliding down to the ground or gliding up onto a tree. Um, so they can fly, but they prefer to hop and jump. Um, and also when they're exposed um, to insecticides or they are frightened, um, they will expose their wings. So normally you're gonna see them in that gray state. You're gonna see that much more often than you see the wing spread. The wing spread uh, generally means they're either gliding to another surface or they feel threatened in some way. So this is the part that I wanna spend a little bit of time on and that is the egg masses. And this is something that um, a lot of people ask about because they can be a little bit, um, I don't wanna say confusing, but um, you know, they're uh, deceiving almost, because if you look, they look very much like tree bark, right? Um, so each one of the egg masses has about 30 to 50 eggs per mass. Um, now, the pictures that you see here, the one that you see on the left is one that's been there for a little while. The one that you see in the middle, um, very common. It kind of has that shiny mud appearance to it. But over on the right, I want to point out something too. That's one that's probably a little more fresh, the one up on the top. Um, if you'll notice, some of it is white. That generally means that those eggs were just laid and they haven't really dried out yet. Um, as they're there for a little while, you start to get that um, gray brown mud color and they start to, you know, crack and, uh, you know, they really start to be difficult to find. Um, they can actually be found at all heights of the tree. So um, that does present a little bit of a problem when it comes to um, trying to get all of them and kill them all, because it's actually just not safe to get to all of the levels of the tree that they could be at. Um, you want to scrape the egg masses. And I have a little video that we're going to show that I'm going to show in just a moment that's going to show you exactly how to do it. But um, you want to scrape the spotted lanternfly egg masses and place them permanently in an alcohol solution. Um, that can be rubbing alcohol, it can be um, hand sanitizer, um, anything like that. Um, and that's one way that we can reduce the spotted lanternfly uh, damage. So as many egg masses as we can find and scrape off and get rid of, you know, that's 30 to 50 uh, spotted lanternflies that we're not going to have flying around in the springtime. Um, and it's important to consider that the spotted lanternfly egg masses are laid on many surfaces. So not just trees. We typically would think that they're just gonna lay their egg masses on trees because that's what we think of when we think of other moth-like insects um, that they're gonna be uh, you know, on leaves or on trees, things like that. The spotted lanternfly will lay their eggs pretty much anywhere. Um, bricks, trees, outdoor furniture, rocks, fence posts, um, any surface that they can find that they can stick that egg mass to, then they're going to do that. Um, so, so, so keep that in mind when you're looking around for those egg masses going forward, um, that you really, you know, keep an eye out anywhere. Um, we often see them at, uh, county parks. They'll be, um, in some of the strangest places that are not trees. So, um, something to think about. And additionally, because they can be found at all heights of the tree, um, I want to make sure that we, we put out there that you want to be safe whenever you're trying to get rid of them. We really want you to get rid of as many as possible, but we also want you to be safe in doing it. So don't climb trees to, uh, to get them down. So I have a little video that um, Kate Brown, one of our program associates in Burlington County, uh, put together, and she's going to show you how to get rid of the egg masses. Hi, my name is Kate Brown. I'm a program associate with Rutgers Cooperative Extension of Burlington County. Today we're here at the Burlington County Agricultural Center to show how to scrape spotted lanternfly egg masses. So there are ways to control spotted lanternfly throughout the whole uh, year round, but right now is the best time to scrape spotted lanternfly eggs between fall and early spring. And by doing so, you can get rid of 30 to 50 eggs, which are all in one egg mass. So you're helping to control the population uh, and the nymphs that will emerge come spring. So the first thing you wanna do in preparing to scrape spotted lanternfly egg masses is get your supplies ready. We're preparing this bag to scrape spotted lanternfly eggs. We're taking the hand sanitizer and putting it in the bag so that the eggs start to contact the alcohol as soon as we start scraping them in. So you'll need a Ziploc bag filled with hand sanitizer or another alcohol-based solution, and then some kind of scrape card. 
Um, here's the official beat the bug scrape card, but you can just use another uh, old ATM card or gift card or um, any kind of flat, hard surface. And then you'll need to locate the egg masses. So here we're looking at a branch full of these egg masses that have this brown, muddy appearance. Um, you might also see the egg masses, they might be naked, or you'll see kind of in here, these naked egg masses that don't have that muddy coverage on them. It just looks like columns of eggs laying there. So once you identify an area with egg masses, then uh, there's two things you can do. One, you can just hold the bag, scrape the eggs into, um, into the bag, making sure they all get in the bag and then contact the hand sanitizer so that um, the alcohol does kill them. Or you can first uh, take the back of the card, press against the egg mass to kill the, uh, the nymphs inside, the larva inside, and then you can scrape that uh, into the bag again. You don't want to scrape them just to the ground because they need to be in contact with the alcohol in order to, um, to die in, in this solution. Burlington County is one of eight counties in New Jersey that currently has a quarantine in effect for spotted lanternfly. So if you see spotted lanternfly in a quarantine county, you don't need to report it anymore. But if you do see spotted lanternfly outside of the quarantine counties, then you should report that sighting to the New Jersey Department of Agriculture. Now that we're done scraping the spotted lanternfly eggs, we need to practice certain steps to dispose of them properly. So first we want to close the bag up and then we can just use the tree and press all the hand sanitizer up along all the eggs so we make sure that they are contacting that alcohol. So the final step in getting rid of these spotted lanternfly egg masses is to get another bag, take the bag that we collected our egg masses into, put it in there, and this bag could accommodate several bags if you have a bunch of people scraping with smaller bags into one big bag, and then zip this shut, and then we'll throw this double bagged bag of spotted lanternfly eggs into the trash and that will be sufficient to get rid of these egg masses and help protect us for next year. Mine. So thank you for watching this video on how to scrape spotted lanternfly eggs and also thank you in advance for participating in scraping season and helping protect our county and surrounding counties and even other states from the spread of this invasive pest. You like it? You like it? I don't know. Looks good though. Hi. Okay. Okay, so um, the next thing we're going to talk about is host plants. And this is a very common question for everyone. Um, because what is actually hosting um, the, the spotted lanternfly? We focus on the tree of heaven, and I'll get to that in just a moment. But um, the spotted lanternfly can actually feed on more than 70 plant species, including cultivated and wild grape fruit trees, and hardwood trees common in woodlots and as landscaping plantings. Um, as with all plant hoppers, the spotted lanternfly has sucking mouth parts um, that it inserts into the plant tissues to remove the fluids it needs to survive. And then during feeding, the, the spotted lanternfly excretes significant amounts of honeydew or sugar water. Um, and then the honeydew deposit, uh, deposits on the plant provide a food source for sooty mold fungus that can grow on the plant surfaces and, um, and fruit leading to reduced photosynthesis and plant vigor. So um, not only that, the honeydew also leaves behind um, that, that sugar water. It's usually sort of a, um, almost a syrupy kind of uh, residue and um, invites other pests in. So, um, you know, other pests that are looking for, you know, that are attracted to the honeydew will come feed on the plant. So, um, so it not only feeds on the plant itself, it also invites other pests in and other diseases in. So um, ends up uh, making the plant um, less vigorous. It makes it, um, you know, more prone to additional diseases. Um, the, it, it primarily feeds on the trunk and the limbs of the plant. So it doesn't usually go for the fruit, though we have seen it um, feeding on some, 
uh, on some of the fruit in um, some of our home gardens. Um, however, it does primarily target the trunk and the limbs. Um, and then let's talk a bit about the tree of heaven because the tree of heaven um, seems to be one of its uh, largest hosts and they seem to attract to it in the largest numbers. And that particular plant is very abundant in New Jersey. It's also an invasive species, but we have quite a bit of them. Um, the thing about the tree of heaven is that it's one of those um, very fast spreading volunteer plants. So once you have one, it's very likely that you will see lots of seed seedlings pop up um, because they very vigorously um, pro self propagate. Um, but accurate identification is really a key here. And I put a couple of different uh, life stages of the tree of heaven up on the pictures to the left. Um, and the reason for that is um, it's very, it, it looks very similar to some of our native trees, uh, common native trees. Um, and we actually don't want to get rid of our natives because as we all know, our native trees attract our native species and, um, you know, getting rid of those is going to be counterproductive to what we want to do here. Um, so uh, some of the trees and uh, shrubs that have similar pinnately compound leaf structures are sumac. Um, that is probably the most common one that we have people mix it up with. Um, walnut, hickory, ash, locust, and box elder are um, also commonly um, misconstrued as mm -hmm. a tree of heaven. And the reason why I wanted to show the two pictures is that the one on top is um, not a full grown tree of heaven because they actually do get much larger, larger than that, but it's one that's gotten quite a bit bigger and um, tree of heaven grow very fast. So um, you can go from the seedling, which is what you see on bottom there, to um, a tree in a, you know a year to a year and a half. So they're very quick, uh, very quick growers. Um, and the more we can find where when they're in that tiny state, like you see on the bottom there, uh, the easier they are to get rid of. Because once they've grown for a little while, you actually have to saw them down, and they can be very difficult to get rid of. Um, some of the other key hosts include black walnut, red maple, river birch, and willow. Um, you know, there are some studies that are going on right now uh, about the relationship between oaks and uh, tree of heaven and um, spotted lanternflies when they're within about 15 feet of each other. Um, so we hope to get some results on that. Um, you know, coming up, but there's a lot of research around spotted lantern flies and how to manage them going on. And, you know, as we move through, we hopefully will find some better ways to manage them. They also attract to New Jersey's, uh, some of New Jersey's really important crops like grapes, apples, and peaches. Um, all right, so we're gonna talk for just a moment about management and control. Um, I did briefly want to mention that um, I was in Hamilton last week and uh, talking to some of the wine growers there, and um, they've done some of their own experiments because not only are we doing them, we have scientists working on them, but within some of our, uh, our farms, they also do some, uh, you know, some things to, to try to manage them and control them within their own property. So um, we did have one person who told us that they were leaving the tree of heaven um, on the outer perimeter of their vineyard um, and actually treating the trees um, with an injection that would that then kills the spotted lan lantern flies. Uh, very similar to what we do with emerald ash borers. Um, so they're choosing to use it um, essentially like a trap crop. Um, and if you haven't ever heard of trap cropping before, what that usually is is that we put a plant that is very attractive to the pests that we're trying to keep away from our um, from our desired crop. So what they're doing is they're using the tree of heaven to attract the, um, the spotted lantern flies away from the grapevines. And, um, you know, they've been pretty successful with that. Um, it's not 100%, but it's something that they're working on. And, um, and I'm sure we'll see um, research like that um, happening more often as we, as we go along. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this um, this chart for just a moment. This actually includes both homeowner and um, commercial management and control options. I'm gonna focus on homeowner control options today, mainly because a lot of your um, control options that are available to farmers are not available to homeowners. And there's a reason for that. You need um, pesticide certification license in order to use some of, the, uh, some of the things that they have the ability to use. 
Um, but when I want to talk to everyone about are ways that you can manage them within your home garden. Um, the first one we already talked about, and that is um, removing the preferred host plants. So within your home garden, removing those um, tree of heaven seedlings, um, getting rid of any invasive species that seem to be attractants to the spotted lanternfly. Um, you want to make sure that you don't have, if, if you have high populations of spotted lanternfly, um, on other trees that um, you consider removing those trees as well, because we want to try to reduce that population and anything that they're attracting to. Um, again, keeping in mind that sometimes you have some of your native species that look very much like, and you don't want to get rid of your native species. You want to keep those around. Um, you want to get rid of trees that overhang outdoor living spaces like patios or pools. Um, they can be pruned down. You don't want to get rid of the tree. You just want to prune it down so it's not over those spaces um, so that the honeydew and the sooty mold don't end up dropping down and um, creating problems for your other, uh, your other plants. Um, the next thing you can do is, ban is, is called banding trees. And what that means is that um, you band the trees with a sticky tape um, you can actually, uh, there, there are several videos on YouTube and other uh, locations where you can um, find out how to create your own. You can also purchase them. Um, generally, they're pretty easy to make on your own. You band the tree with sticky tape, um, and that may assist in protecting your important landscape trees from the spotted lanternfly. Um, it can also be used as a monitoring tool for the presence of spotted lanternfly on a tree. So if you think you might have them, because you've maybe seen one or two in your yard, but you're not sure what they're attracting to, you can put that banding around and see, you know, get a good idea of what they're attracting to. Um, it's more effective against the nymph stage rather than the adult spotted lanternfly. Uh, generally speaking, the uh, adult uh, spotted lanternfly will avoid the tape. Um, they're too smart by that point. Um, there are uh, a lot of commercially available sticky bands, but um, you can easily do it with duct tape. Um, one thing that you want to be careful of, though, is that by, um, by banding with tape, you do run the risk of attracting things that you don't want to attract, uh, meaning um, non-target non insects like uh, bees, butterflies, and natural enemies of the spotted lanternfly. So you want to be careful of that. Um, and it can also unfortunately attract small vertebrates like birds, squirrels, and bats. So if you do decide to do banding, um, put a, you know, a mesh over the tape um, so that you, you know, you avoid, uh, you know, things getting on the tape that you don't want to get on there. So we want to protect the species like birds and butterflies and everything, but um, we also want to get rid of this um, oh. invasive species. Um, so the next thing is scraping egg masses, which we already talked about. Um, you want to, anytime you see the egg masses on trees or uh, bricks or any other surface, scrape those off, put them in alcohol or um, hand sanitizer, squish that around to make sure that you get all of that alcohol on there and it actually kills the, um, the nymphs that are in there. Um, there are chemical control options. Um, not as many of them are available to homeowners. And at the end, I'm going to um, put this link that you see up here, um, homeowner uh, treatment recommendations. Um, that has a very long list of options that you can use in your home gardens um, that will help with getting either um, getting rid of spotted lantern flies or um, preventing them from coming into your yard. Um, you can't prevent, just like with any insect, you can't completely prevent them from coming in. So the best, the best method of getting rid of them is going to be to try to manage it through um, particularly biological controls, um, cultural controls, um, meaning cultural controls, meaning we talked about um, getting rid of invasive species um, like the tree of heaven. Um, you know, mechanical control, also getting rid of those species, using the banding, things like that. Um, okay. So let's talk just for a moment about natural enemies, because a lot of people ask us, um, and I've gotten a lot of pictures of different, um, different insects around us and, uh, that have, that are attracted and actually eat the spotted lanternfly. So, um, 
generally well, speaking, um, we do have preda um, predaceous insects, spiders, um, parasitoids, fungi, and birds that do um, feed on the spotted lanternfly. So yay, we do have some natural enemies here. Um, earlier, someone had asked me, um, so, uh, you know, how do they control them, uh, where they came from? The truth is where they came from, they're actually not an invasive species. Um, one of the problems that we have when things come, come in from other places, just like with plants, um, when an insect comes in from another place, it's probably not an invasive species where it came from because the natural predators live there. Where once it comes here, it doesn't have a natural predator or it doesn't have enough natural predators um, to control the population. So that's why it's invasive here, but it's not invasive where it came from. So um, the things that we're mentioning here are all things that we've seen that do feed on the spotted lantern fly, but they're generalists and they're likely not going to control the spread at this point. But we are doing studies um, to better understand how they can be used as a part of natural management going forward. Um, so I've actually um, seen uh, here in my, in my own yard, uh, we've seen um, a, uh, a spider that had several of them in the web. And then, um, you know, we've seen a few other insects that had them in their mouth. So, um, so we do have some that are seeking them out and getting rid of them along with us. Um, this is another common question that we get from homeowners, and that is, are they harmful to me and my pets? Um, I've seen a lot of information out there um, telling people that they should be careful because these are really toxic to their pets. Um, spotted lantern flies actually do not bite or sting humans or pets. Um, so that's really important to know. And at this point, there's no known toxins that have, be, that have been found in spotted lantern flies. Um, that would harm pets. However, pets are naturally curious and they often ingest things that they shouldn't. Um, kids often ingest things that they shouldn't. So um, you do want to, you know, keep in mind that there's always a possibility that your pet will try to taste one. So the safest course of action is to keep them away from living or dead spotted lanternflies as much as possible. Um, and if they do ingest anything that's outside their normal diet, um, any kind of insect, um, and they're showing signs that they're ill or they're injured, then you want to consult your vet. Um, so at this point, we don't, we're not aware of toxins that will harm pets or humans, but, um, you know, uh, anytime well, what, your, your pet you appears that? ill, then you should certainly call your vet. So do we live in a quarantine county? At this point, yeah. no, Atlantic County is not a quarantine county. And the reason oh, that's important is we actually do have um, many quarantine counties in uh, New Jersey, uh, Burlington, Camden, Essex, Gloucester, Hunterdon, Mercer, Middlesex, Monmouth, Morris, Salem, Somerset Union, and Warren. And one thing that you will notice that is uh, common ground for those counties is that they are generally along the Pennsylvania border. Um, however, we have seen spotted lanternflies in every county in New Jersey, um, particularly in New Jer in Atlantic County. Over the past, I would say, um, two to three weeks, we have gotten more and more calls. So they've actually uh, been reported in Atlantic County since last year, but they were in very small numbers um, and they were kind of sporadic. So um, this season, we're starting to see quite a few more in our county. So um, the reason people ask that question is generally they've read, um, uh, we shouldn't report them anymore. And in Atlantic County, that's actually not true. We do need you to continue to report the uh, any spotted lanternfly populations that you see um, because we're not a quarantine county. Um, so really important that we go ahead and continue to report. And again, at the end of this, I'll give you a link um, to exactly where you can report them. So I don't, I don't know what county everyone is from. So I'm gonna give you uh, just a, a quick rundown of what you should do if you actually are living in a quarantine county or if Atlantic County becomes a quarantine county. So in New Jersey, um, what do you wanna do if your county is quarantined? Um, the biggest thing we want you to do is look before you leave. So anytime you're gonna um, leave your county particularly, you wanna take a look at a few things. You wanna check your vehicle. Um, before leaving a parking lot or a work site, um, 
You want to look for any eggs or insects. Um, check doors, sides, bumpers, wheel wells, grills, roofs. Um, a lot of that is particularly directed at commercial um, vehicles. But, um, you know, at this point, we're really just trying to get everyone to really be aware and, um, and do as much as we can to try to um, stop the spread of this, um, this insect. So if you, if you find it, um, destroy any eggs or insects that you find. Stomp on them, stomp them out um with the eggs you know at, stomp on them squish them do whatever you can to uh to kill them um you want to inspect any items that are being moved and that's important because uh, particularly in pennsylvania we have a lot of people who uh and from the western counties we have a lot of people who come here to the shore um for weekends for vacations um second houses whatever so um Whenever you're going to be moving from county to county, you want to inspect the items that are being moved. And that's true of bicycles, um, shipping containers, propane tanks, um, pallets, uh, beach chairs, um, any coolers or anything that's been outside or exposed that, could, that they could have laid their eggs on. You want to make sure that you're um, taking a look at that and making sure that you're not taking it from one area that's already quarantined into an area that um, has, not had, has not been spread to as much. Um, when you park, you want to park with your windows closed. Um, and that's easier to do this time of year because it's starting to get cool. Um, the spotter and lanternfly and its nymphs can enter through vehicles unsuspectedly, so easily just flies into your uh, your car and you don't even notice it. Um, so you want to make sure you keep your your windows closed and, if possible, try to park 15 feet away from trees if you're, especially if you're in a quarantine zone. Um, always remove and destroy any pests that you find. Um, scrape the egg masses into the plastic bag and uh, throw them in the trash. Um, and remove host trees. We already talked about that. So anytime you have, uh, you know, the host trees that we've discussed, you want to try to remove those or control, uh, definitely control their spread. Um, and then because we're not in a quarantine county, you want to report sightings. If you're in a county that's already quarantined, you actually don't have to report at this point. Um, but because we are in a county that's not quarantined, we still want to continue to report that. Um, the easiest way you can report that is to, uh, if you Google um, spotted lanternfly New Jersey, um, it will bring you to the spot at the Department of Agriculture spotted Ooh. lantern website. And there's actually an online reporting tool there. Um, one thing that is really helpful is um, any mm -hmm. photographs that you have. Um, no, so if you can take a picture of it, it helps with identification. Um, and it's actually, we're gonna go to that. Sure. Um, so uh, these are the websites. Again, I'll try to you know copy those into our chat box whenever I'm done here, so that um, so that you can you'll have them for use later. You can also email slf plant um, in plant industry at ag.nj.gov. Um, again, you would want to you know uh, tell them your location, particularly your county um, and the town that you live in. And um, if you can provide any photos, that's actually very helpful in positively identifying the, um, the insect. If you're ever not sure, um, you know, just like any insect, the, sometimes the colors vary slightly. So if you find one and you're like, I think this is a spotted lanternfly, but I'm not sure, oh. you can always call our office um, and ask us to take a look at it. Um, you can either bring in a sample, even though our offices are currently closed to the public, we are still taking samples. So if you call us ahead of time and let us know that you're coming, then we'll either meet you at the front door or we'll tell you to leave it in our master gardener box in, um, in the front foyer and we will take it positively, identify whether it is or isn't a spotted lanternfly, and then uh, we'll give you a call back and let you know. Um, or we honestly, we probably will look at it right there um, and let you know, because um, generally speaking, our, um, you know, our employees there are very well trained in what they look like at this point. So um, anytime you can call my office and we'll help you out. Um, same is true if you're not sure if one of the, uh, you know, if you're not sure if it's a tree of heaven and if it is you want to get rid of it, then give me a call if you can send me or send me an email with a picture of the tree and we can do an identification of it um, to make sure that of what it is so that we don't get rid of those native species. 
So again, uh, this is where uh, some places that you can find um, a lot of spin, a spotted lanternfly information, um, frequently out asked questions, um, and uh, both homeowner and commercial um, answers to questions there. Um, Penn State Extension, um, is a great resource. It came from Pennsylvania, so of course they've been studying it uh, longer than we have. Um, but now that it is in New Jersey, we're also, um, you know, there's extensive research being done at Rutgers Cooperative Extension. So we also have the Spotted Lantern Fly website. And then there's the New Jersey Department of Agriculture site. Um, again, if you type in Spotted Lantern Fly um, and New Jersey, that is the site that will come up along with the self-reporting tool. So thank you very much for coming. And um, I'm gonna open the floor for questions here and I will try to put those things down in chat for you. Okay. So this is gonna take me just a moment. Um, are, do we have any questions in chat or no? No, okay. Um, Nanette, I'm not sure if it will be easier for me to send you a list to email out or if you want me to put all of these links in chat. What do you think? Um, I'd, I'd put them in chat because I, a lot of okay. the people that are here, I don't know who they are. Okay, great. Okay, so it's going to take me just a moment to pull those up. Um, I don't want to share my screen, so give me just a moment and I will slowly put those in. But if anyone has any questions, um, go ahead. You can um, ask them while I'm doing this so that, um, you know, I can, I should be able to uh, answer them at the same time because I've got all this up already. Does anyone have any questions? How does one create a mesh to put over the sticky tape? Um, you know, I have seen, there are actually several videos out there and um, I've seen people use, um, you know, screen like you would use for window screen and things like that. Um, and you would kind of wrap it around and then attach the screen so that it's, it's sitting on there, but it's not something that um, is gonna allow uh, things into there that you don't want to be in. Um, give me one second, let me get this one website up. Okay, so first, Here's the Rutgers website. Um, is there anything you can do to make your yard less attractive for them? Unfortunately, no. Other than removing your, uh, you know, any anything like the tree of heaven, um, things like that, and just making sure that you get rid of any egg masses. Um, there's not really a lot that you can do. Like any bug, they're going to come into your yard. Um, and the, the best we can do at this point is trying to is try to manage them and control them. Um, is it okay to post some images from your presentation on Facebook? Um, yes, I would be happy to do this. In fact, what I'll do is I'll give, um, I'll give Nanette a, a PDF copy of my presentation that she could share. Um, and then also we often put things up about spot, spotted lantern flies on our site. And, um, I particularly I'll put something up in the next, uh, next day or so, so that um, anyone who has any questions could also put that up there. Let me get one more website up here. I wanted to make sure I'm getting the questions at the same time as well. We, we are recording this um, and we will post it on our website uh, probably tomorrow or the next day. Uh, it's sustainableehc.org. So if anybody wants to share this with their friends, they can go to our website and we'll have it there. Okay, so the link that I just put up is actually a Spotted Lanternfly uh, Homeowner Treatment Recommendation Sheet. Uh, we give this out to anyone who uh, gives us a call at, um, at our office and they're looking for ways to get rid of it. The wonderful about, thing about this sheet is that it actually tells you, um, you know, the residual activity and the activity against spotted lanternflies. Um, whether or not it's legal to use by a homeowner, um, the products available, the mode of exposure, and the active ingredient. So um, very good information. Um, that's also available at the, uh, the New Jersey Agriculture website.
So I had a question. Um, yes. How, I know that they're on the beach. What is it at the beach that they would be interested in? Um, you know, interestingly, I am not sure, but my guess would be that they're attracted to um, probably the vegetation along the beach. Um, so it's not so much the water that they're attracted to, but the vegetation, um, you know, like the, um, the dunes, uh, the trees that especially, because particularly we've heard them in Brigantine, but I have not heard them being in uh, a lot of other areas. So I'm wondering if it has to do with maybe the types of trees that they have along the beach uh, could be what's attracting them. Well, I know um, Brigantine also, has trees, but um, you know, like the down beach communities where people have said they've, they've seen them all over, um, there's not that many trees on the beach. So uh -huh. there, there's new grass. So, so I have heard that one thing they're looking at is uh, maybe even weather patterns that may be moving them. Um, there's no definitive evidence of that yet, but it would make sense. So it's something that they're certainly looking at at this point. Um, and it, it would be interesting to see if that had something to do with there suddenly being so many um, right at the shore. Mm -hmm. um, I, the timing would have been around when there were some storms, but again, there's, um, I couldn't find any scientific evidence, um, that said, yes, that's how they came this direction. But I think it's something that they're looking at as a possibility. Um, I put up the Penn state spotted lantern fly site there. Um, and next I'm going to put up the New Jersey agriculture site. Okay, so um, I'm actually uh, going to give you the link that's directly to the homeowner resources. And the reason for that is if you uh, scroll down just a little bit on this site, um, you'll find the, um, the reporting tool and then also the email address for uh, that you can report um, any sort of citing to. So we don't call the county extension to report? Um, you can call us. It's actually really fast to do the online reporting tool. But I know that sometimes we have people who are just not tech savvy and they have a hard time with that. Um, and generally speaking, we're happy to report it for you. Okay. Um, you know, so if you give us a call, um, likely they're first going to tell you go to the reporting tool. But if you say I need some assistance with it, then they will transfer you to the Master Gardener helpline and we'll help you get that reported. Um, okay. I've reported it for quite a few people, so I don't mind doing that. Okay. Um, and then one last thing I'm going to put up here, and that is our, um, uh, hold on one second, let me find it. Um, we have our demographic study, if anyone's willing to, you know, again, you're not required to fill it out for coming to this presentation, but if you would help us out, it gives us an idea of, you know, uh, you know, who's coming to our programs and how we can better serve a wider group of people in the community um, in the future. Um, and I am here for as long as you guys have questions. So, uh, you know, if you have anything I didn't uh, go over, um, I'm happy to do that. And then also, you know, a lot of, a lot of times I know you, um, you go to one of these presentations and then um, <laughs> you're away from it and you think to yourself, oh my gosh, I wish I had asked that. No problem. I am happy to answer questions. Give us a call at that 609-625-0056 and I'll put that in the chat as well. Um, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, like I said, our um, master gardeners are very well versed in spotted lantern flies at this point. And, um, you know, we're at the point uh, at, at that time of year where we generally have a very small group of volunteers who are working. So, um, you know, you generally get the, the same couple of people. So you kind of get to know them in the, in the fall. <laughs> All right, Linda, so that's our survey. Yes. Linda, uh, Kim has. Uh, yes. I, I don't know whether it's too late to report this or not, but about a month ago, I had seen, I was kayaking and in the Molokai, 
there were at least five of them floating on the water and I like picked them up and squashed them against my kayak. And then just about two weeks ago, no, about a week ago, I was in a Carver City and I had seen one behind our senior center. So it is never too late to report it. Um, and the great thing about that online reporting tool, I should probably bring that up so you can see it. Um, in fact, I think, uh, let me see if I can do that. Um, the great thing about the reporting tool is that it actually, it, it asks for the date and everything. So, um, you know, if you don't get a chance to do it and then down the road, you say, oh, I wish I'd reported that, um, you can actually go back and report it. So, um, and, and it will ask you the date and the location. And I'm sorry, the reporting tool is where at the extension? The reporting tool is um, on the Department of Agriculture site. I'm going to show you um, where to find it. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen quick to show you guys where, to, where you can find it. Let's see. Sorry, it's not showing me share my screen right now. Ah, there it is. Okay. Um, okay. So when you, um, when you go to the Department of Agriculture website, um, specifically if you wanted to just Google it, but we also put the, the link down in the chat, um, you're gonna see, uh, you're gonna see the, if you go to the Spotted Lanternfly uh, site on the Department of Agriculture and you go to Homeowner Resources, um, if you scroll down just a little bit, there's a link right down here under Homeowner Resources um, for to, to report the sighting, you would just click on here and it takes you to the reporting tool. And then I'll show you what it's going to ask you. Um, oh, why is it not bringing it out? Okay. So this is what's going to come up whenever you go to the reporting tool. Um, you're going to enter your name, um, a phone number, and that's just in case they want to call back to just, you know, ask you any uh, questions about where you found it. Um, an email address, and then it's going to ask you to tell them uh, where you found it, whether it was residential, farm, um, a port, airport, a railroad, a park, or somewhere else. The number that you saw present, um, the plant host. So in your case, um, you know, you could say you have found them floating in the water. Um, and then the life stage that you saw them at. So if you saw them, likely you're going to see them right here right now is in this adult stage. Um, I haven't seen any in this late nymph stage in quite a while now. So I don't think you're going to see any of those um, flying around. But just in case, you know, you would want to let them know that. Um, if you've seen an egg mass, but you haven't seen adults, then um, we also want you to report that and let us know where you saw it. Um, and then the date of sighting. So this is where, even if it was a month ago, um, you can still give us the date that you were, uh, that you saw it. Um, if you happen to have any photos, they're very helpful. That's just for positive identification. Um, and then any notes. So, um, so like you were telling me that you saw them floating in the Mullica River, you could put that down here. Um, I saw them floating, I killed them, and um, that's all I saw. Um, and then you just hit submit and that will go directly to the Department of Agriculture and they're keeping um, tabs, uh, particularly on counties that are not um, in quarantine right now. Thank you. What does it mean when a county's in quarantine? What it basically means is that um, when a county is at, so right now we're not in quarantine and that just means that we're still reporting to the Department of Agriculture and we're um, looking to manage them the same way that anyone else in the, in the, uh, the state is. What happens whenever a county goes into quarantine, um, it's really more of a legal term than anything um, and more directed at your commercial vehicles than it is at homeowner vehicles. So what we, uh, what I just went over with everyone was that, um, you know, we want you to um, to to look, take a look at your cars, take a look at anything that's in your car. So um, what we would do is we would ramp up talking to people about doing all of those things a little bit more. But again, it, it's more of a legal term than anything and more something that um, would become a, a requirement for commercial vehicles and anything like that. Um, 
So less about homeowners, but still something that we would make people very aware of. Um, Cause like I said, you know, if you're in Egg Harbor city and, um, and you know that you have them there, but you're going to the beach for the weekend, um, you know, it's a good idea to take a look on your car. They're great hitchhikers. Um, you would be amazed at how long they can stay on a car. So, um, you know, they will happily hitch, hitchhike onto your car and uh, take a ride to the beach with you. That, that could be part of how they got, you know, so many got to Brigantine as well. Um, lots of vacationers coming from different places that had them. Um, and, you know, they traveled along with them. So that's essentially what it means. Like I said, more of a legal term than anything. Thank you. Belinda, if, if we are quarantined, do we yes. have to, is it mandatory that we keep our windows up? I know you had mentioned keeping no. the windows it's up. It's not mandatory. It's just one of those things that helps, you know, okay. it, it helps with the, you know, it, with slowing the spread, uh, but it's not mandatory. No one's going to make you, you know, close your windows in your car. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Good. <Whew. laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Especially on those warm days in the fall, right? Right. Who doesn't want to have their windows down? Exactly. I'm going to make sure. Um, so someone asked, uh, do you think predators will develop more of a taste for spotted lanternfly as time goes by? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I don't know if they will evolve. You know, I, I want to say that it's likely they'll be like a lot of other uh, animals and insects and everything else that we come in contact with in the absence of what they're looking for. Um, they'll find something else. So, um, and it may come to, um, to a point where other insects start to be more predatory on them than they are right now. But I don't know, uh, it's an interesting question, but I don't have a good answer from that. And I'm not sure that it's something that they've done a lot of studies on at this point. Cause I think at this point, we're just trying to manage what we have and find whatever natural predators um, we can and any sort of management strategies, particularly because, you know, like in this area, what we're worried about are, um, you know, we have quite a few wineries in the area. Um, we've apple farms, peach farms. Um, so, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and not, you know, we talked about those as being things they attract to, but they actually attract to a lot of different crops. So they can be rather devastating to a wide range of crops. So it just happen to be the ones that they attract to first. But, um, you know, like deer, we talk about deer attract to certain plants first, but then the absence of what they're looking for, they attract to anything, right? Are they, have they been spotted anywhere besides Pennsylvania and New Jersey? Yes, they've been seen in Delaware. Um, I believe they've been seen north also. So um, pretty much I'm not sure area. further west, but I, I know that north and south they have been seen. Pretty much anything that borders Pennsylvania, I think they've seen them in. Unfortunately. And yeah. like many insects, they, they will, um, you know, they'll travel eventually. They'll, they'll move to other states. And then the question will uh, more than anything be about where they survive and where they don't survive. Um, you know, like some of us, we have insects that survive here that would never survive in the South. And the same is true um, the opposite direction. So, you know, you might find that they'll, um, and, and I think it just kind of remains to be seen, you might find that there will, you know, maybe end up being almost a wall. It's more of a temperature wall than anything, but um, that's hard to say at this point. I, I think we don't know. Because um, believe it or not, it, it's, even though they were first seen in 2014, it's still fairly new when you think about it. Any other questions? Did I answer everyone's question so far? I want to make sure I didn't miss any. I think I got them all. Um, yeah, I don't see any more. Um, I will, um, Nanette, I will look for a video that includes um, how to do the mesh screen and the tape around the tree. Um, okay. I, I'm pretty sure that we have a video made of how to do that. Um, and I'll, I'll send that over to you or I'll add it into the presentation and, and send you a copy of that. Okay. We'll uh, probably add a page to our website just for the spotted lantern fly and list right. all these resources. I was telling Nanette earlier, um, I was in Hamilton a couple of weeks ago 
And, um, and I was telling one of our agriculture agents, oh, I haven't seen them at all where I live. Um, and I live in Western Galloway. So, uh, you know, Egg Harbor City is my address. And um, I drove home. And as I drove up, I looked and right in the spider web, there were, um, there were a couple of spotted lantern flies. So I was like, well, look, I jinxed it. So, <laughs> so they are in our area. They are in the Egg Harbor City area. Um, we, we have had a couple of calls from Egg Harbor City. Like I said mm -hmm. earlier, um, I think at this point, we've had a call from every area in Atlantic County. So we know they're here. Um, we're just still a reporting county for now. And, uh, you know, at some point, um, just like the Emerald Ash Borer, there will come a point where we'll um, be less of a reporting county and more just everyone is trying to manage them. Well, we have a lot of uh, London plane trees lying in the streets, Egg Harbor City and the bark on those are modeled, so they might right. be hard to spot on those trees because yes. it's just part of the tree. <laughs> but right, and unfortunately, and, and, you know, the, the river birch may be the same thing, you know, um, depending on where they lay their eggs. But if they lay them on the river birch, that might also be uh, kind of difficult to see. Um, and just in general, the way they look is um, it, it, they blend into bark very well. Right. Um, so, you know, in general, they're, they're not easy to find, but um, going back to the video with, uh, with Kate Brown, um, you know, they're, uh, when you really look up close, they have like that, that road look like you would with anything that's, that's laying eggs. So, um, you know, close inspection, um, anything in your yard. The wonderful thing about homeowners is that you have a smaller space, so it's easier for you to look at all the trees in your yard periodically. Um, where when we get into commercial, it's a little bit more difficult for us to right. find all the spaces. Kim, we might have to go over to Lincoln Park and check out all our trees. I think you're right, Nanette. Right. That's probably <laughs> a good idea. I better start in my yard first and then I'll move over. Right. I have a lot right. of mulberries. A lot of crevices there as well. I don't know if they would like mulberries, but I'm going to check it out just in case. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, well, Belinda, thank you so much for giving us You're your welcome. time and sharing all this information. I've been worrying about it and um, wanted to share it with our green team and hopefully uh, they'll come online and, and watch the video um, yeah. when we post it and get some more education out there because I think it's just a matter of awareness. A lot of people don't yes. know about it and they'll look at that fly and say, oh, how pretty, <laughs> you know? Yes, that is the thing. People look at them and say, oh, but it's so pretty. Why do we want to kill it? Um, and it is a shame because they are pretty, but, um, but they're definitely very devastating to crops. Um, and if and if anyone has any questions, um, if anyone's watching the recording later and they have a question, um, you know, again, they, they can call our number and we'll be happy to answer their questions for them. Right. And, right. and the recording will include the chat as well. So, right. Thank you so much. Um, I, I'm going to log off and um, we didn't have our regular green team meeting this month. We, uh, opted to do this, but I just wanted to share with the members of our green team who are here that we did get word that we got certified, uh, bronze certification. So we're good for another Thanks. couple Thanks. of years. And it was hard to get. We, we Jody worked really hard on it. Um, and I was really pleased when they sent us the email. And we'll be going to the League of Municipalities uh, luncheon if anybody's interested in going. Um, the, our green team is invited. Uh, there is a cost of $35 for the luncheon and it's a very nice luncheon and it's very motivational because you learn so much about what other towns are doing. So uh, if you can go, I would appreciate that, you know, hearing from you. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that I don't know if you're aware of it, but we did get a grant, a um, state grant for to plant trees in the right of way. Uh, on certain streets. And once we know if our residents want trees on those streets, then afterwards, if there's still room, we can open it up to the general public. So we'll be uh, probably sending out a press release on something like that soon. So you should look for it in the current or in the press or whatever. And on our website. So 
Well, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, it's very informative. And again, thanks Belinda for um, sharing your time with us. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you for inviting me. Thanks Belinda. Thank and thank you, Nanette. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.